I've got a, a, a new pregnant wife and we've decided that we're gonna sell our house and, and move in, in the fall time, which is every hunter's dream. So trying to juggle all that stuff and then also plan a trip was, was definitely a little difficult, but you know, I, I feel like that's kind of normal. Everybody's got something going on. Uh, the perfect time doesn't exist. So it's just one of those things that you just kind of have to make happen and, and uh, do the best you can. The area we picked basically was because it gave us the best opportunity. You know, it allowed us to have, for me to have, two tags in my pocket. We covered a lot of miles uh, looking for deer. And by that, I mean, I took the rifle in, uh, had orange on, ready to go, and didn't even take a bow in, uh, which is what the elk tag is. I was pretty confident that, that that's what we were gonna get into. And, you know, if we found and got into some, some elk, it'd be, kind of ancillary and we could plan the rest of the week out. Um, yeah, those plans got turned on their head and uh, all we found were elk, which, you know, I mean, I would say both Kendall and I are probably elk hunters first, deer hunters second. So we turned up some deer here and there. It wasn't what you would want that we could at least tell, you know, potentially maybe a, a spike here or there. Um, but nothing of a caliber that we'd be willing to go after. So came back to camp that night and I think it was an easy decision. You know, I, I think I kind of had to break the ice and say, let's, let's do it. Um, but I, everybody was on board. I mean, it, it was like, all right, you know, let's go have some fun. Let's go to start chasing some elk around. You know, really my expectation is to go in and, and have a good hunt, you know, enjoy the time, you know, I mean, this is, this is something new to all of us that, that are gonna be on this. Uh, Kendall and I work together, but we've never hunted together. So this is a, this is an, a, a whole blank slate. You know, we're thrown in a unit that neither one of us have stepped foot in. I think Kendall actually had a little bit of a relapse into the deer, the deer world, because he kept looking at deer tracks and had a deer up, up high that he thought was a buck. And, and we had a guy screaming behind us, uh, you know, probably no more than 300 yards off, 400 yards off. Dude, dude, we need to go. 
He's ready to play. He could be up top. I don't hear a second. We chased him and where we were at, there's actually quite a few little fingers and, and, and canyons that ran off. So I don't know if he was just that mobile while we were trying to chase him or if it was bouncing off canyons and echoing and throwing us off, but we thought we were right on him. Um, and then we thought we weren't. And we followed and chased bugles for quite a while. And then he ended up moving off and we got silent for a little bit. Best part about elk hunting, except for the bugles and all that, is uh, the midday nap. So we just found this perfect uh, grassy area, took, kicked off the boots, had a little lunch. We're, uh, we still have a bugle over here kind of a lazy bugle and we think there might be another bull back over here but we're gonna we're gonna walk back up here and kind of cast some bugles out and then this is just really good train who knows we might see a deer still I'm highly optimistic about that but uh, we're gonna chase elk the rest of the afternoon Ended up dropping off this ridge and uh, just stumbled what I think is basically their, their bedroom. He just lights up and rips off a bugle and was on top of us.
Dude, he stared at us. I mean, what felt like an hour? I thought it grown. He literally stood. I was ready for a lane, perfect shooting lane. And then he passed through it super quick. And then he stopped. He stared at both of us forever. Dude, I, that's my first call in to a kill. I can't believe it. Let's go here, boy. Let's go find the wall. In an hour. There's his tracks. It's a fast thing. What brought his out? That iron will. Iron will? Yeah. Yeah, there's blood everywhere right here. He maybe went 50, 60 yards and, and died right there, you know, and, and we gave him an hour and got up to him and went to, you know, put my hands on him and I mean, he had already rigged. Yeah, man, it's awesome. It's great ball. But the hard work started, you know, the cutting up and it was an evening kill. So we, it was a long night, we were in there got him cut up, started making some, uh, some in-reach text messages to some, some friends that we have, some Wyoming friends that have some horses, just to say, hey, you know, are you guys free? We got a bull down. That's a full bag. <laughs> and sure enough, Kendall gets a text on the in-reach. Drop me a pin, tell me a time, and I'll be there tomorrow. And I'm pretty sure all three of us just, you know, instantly had smiles, you know, ear to ear knowing that, that we were gonna have a guy come in and, and, and help us uh, get the meat out. So it's it's not that I can't, but you know, when you got good friends with horses, I'm not gonna turn it down. I mean, it was essentially the first day that we had transitioned over to elk and, and for it to happen that quick, it's, it's crazy. You know, you start replaying the day's events and, and uh, I sure, certainly would have told you the night before that we wouldn't have got an elk on the first day, that, you know, we'd have figured out where they were and then made some moves, but I feel like that's elk hunting. You know, just when you think it's not gonna happen, it happens. And ask for a better place to be, perfect weather, meet in the freezer, had a great trip. <laughs>